Greetings, indie warriors, and welcome to I Dream of Indie Games. My name's Old Gamer Joe, and you know, nothing gets you more fired up to play a brand spanking new game than an awesome, hard hitting intro. So I thought it would be fun today to highlight 10 of my favorite indie gaming intros of all time. Obviously, minor spoilers ahead, so if you want to know absolutely nothing about these games, then this video might not be for you. I recommend checking out the timestamps below so you can understand which games are in this video. However, that said, it is just the intros we're talking about talking about so there won't be any major spoilers for the rest of these games. Thank you so much for supporting independent content as always here at the channel, and be sure to head over to patreon.com slash games where you can gain Discord access to the greatest indie gaming community out there. Shoutouts at the end of every video we produce, there's a brand new exclusive podcast fans are really enjoying that, and even free games depending on the tier you select. Your new indie gaming community is waiting for you. Alright, let's do this. Forget indie games for a second, this is one of my favorite game intros in any game ever. Tormented Souls is an excellent old school survival horror title that released back in 2021, and the intro will have your jaw on the floor. Things begin in a nice peaceful manner with the birds chirping and the sun shining, and then we are introduced to lead character Caroline Walker for the first time. While doing her makeup, the doorbell rings, and of course, like so many other great horror titles, our adventure begins with her receiving a mysterious letter. This letter comes from someone located in Canada. Canada at the Wilderberger Hospital, this image resonates greatly with her for whatever reason. Not being able to get the image out of her head for weeks, Caroline finally caves and heads to the hospital. Here she is clubbed in the head out of nowhere, stripped completely naked, and tossed into a bathtub with a tube shoved down her throat. And yes, that's me censoring the boobs, not the game. What's worse than waking up in a tub naked with something jammed down your gullet? Having your eye removed. Yeah, that's even worse. The Tormented Souls intro is a fascinating setup, and I can't wait for the sequel scheduled for later this year. At number 9, this is my personal favorite indie game of all time. If you've known me for a long time, you already know this. We're talking about the legendary Hotline Miami. The intro to Hotline Miami is so freaky, unsettling, and bizarre that it's impossible not to get sucked into this neon-soaked universe immediately. After a trippy tutorial which explains how to murder your foes, you are whisked into a dreamlike state, an apartment room filled with three masked weirdos. Your lead character, which fans have come to know as Jacket, seems to have no memory, but the people in this room sure seem to know him, even hinting that he is better off without knowing his past. After a rather frosty and unwelcoming conversation, we flash over to April 3rd, 1989. Now you are in what appears to be Jacket's apartment. Jacket has a crazy message on his answering machine about a cookie delivery, but inside the box is a mysterious mask and very specific instructions about uh, another kind of delivery. This setup is still intriguing all these years later, with the story of Hotline Miami being one of the best in all of indie gaming. Number 8. Sometimes a good intro isn't really all about the flashy cinematics at all, is it? It can be about effective atmosphere, and Limbo from Playdead is a game that masterfully creates tension and uneasiness without having to say much at all. The intro is very simple. You are a young boy who wakes up in the middle of the woods. His shadowy image and glowing white eyes will send chills down your spine. Why are you here? You don't initially know, and that's kind of the beauty of it all. You just need to press forward, avoiding traps, and try to come to an understanding as to why you're in such a dangerous situation. Will those answers ever come? Well, that's still debated all these years later. Limbo is obviously a masterpiece and a classic indie game that nobody should miss. At number 7 we have Dead or School, a great little action game that also has a kick-ass intro which will get you fired up about playing. In this introduction, it is quickly revealed that mankind is in grave danger, being infected by a nasty virus that's transforming them into hideous mutants. I know, not original, but hear me out. Those that have managed to avoid infection have rallied against the mutants, and ultimately, a great war breaks loose. The humans end up losing the war in the end, and are forced to live underground in the sewers, kinda like the Ninja Turtles, but they aren't serving pizza in these sewers. Fast forward 78 years, and we are introduced to what is left of mankind. A group of these survivors gets the not-so-bright idea to check out the surface after discovering a secret elevator. Just as you would expect, zombie mutants attack, and we get an awesome bloody action scene. This all leads to the main character Hisako earning her schoolgirl uniform, and finally saying, 
enough is enough. Off on the greater adventure you go after this awesome intro for a very fun game that I can't recommend enough. Number 6, The Beautiful Planet of Lana, a critically overlooked cinematic puzzle adventure with a whole lot of heart. It also has an incredibly epic intro that just can't be missed. Things start out peacefully enough with you controlling a young girl following her friend through a bright and happy seaside village. The village is so full of vibrancy and life that what comes next is an absolute heartbreaker. The skies darken and evil robotic creatures swoop in, taking the majority of villagers as hostages. As you run for your life, you find yourself alone. The swelling orchestrated soundtrack will pull at your heartstrings and have you eager to put an end to the robot's evil invasion. The good news is, for as excellent as Planet of Lana's introduction is, the game only gets better from there. If you haven't played this indie classic for yourself, you just don't want to miss out on this one. It's a masterful work with great puzzles, jaw-dropping visuals, and an amazing soundtrack. And if this is your first time seeing the game, then I'm very glad to have introduced it to you. Number 5, Halfway Point. You know, any kid that grew up with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would have been psyched for this intro. Shredder's Revenge is not only one of the great arcade-style brawlers ever, but but it has a sweet intro that is accompanied by a kick-ass remix of the classic Turtles theme song that many of us grew up with. The animation is top-notch as we see the Turtles dropping into action with their signature weapons. As they leap through the city, we also get shots of the classic Turtle van, many of the series' villains, and of course, plenty of pizza. As if you needed any further incentive to play this amazing game, the intro will get your heart racing like no other. It was great to have the Turtles back in an amazing video game after so many duds, and I still find myself going back to Shredder's Revenge all the time. Cowabunga, dudes! Number 4, one of the most original horror games to come around in ages. We're talking about Carry On, a game that puts you in the shoes or uh, tentacles of a nasty red creature that pretty much destroys everything that gets in its way. What I love about the intro to Carry On is that it wastes no time whatsoever in setting the tone for what the game will be about. After you bust free from your capsule, you are immediately sent off to rip doors down, smash crates, and kill every scientist that stands in your way way. No long dialogue section or attempts at character development here, you get what you get in Carrion, and I just love this game for that. A real horror classic, very overlooked again, and one that belongs in your collection from the wonderful folks over at Devolver Digital, who rarely miss when it comes to finding awesome indies. Let's go on to number 3. Anyone who has played the psychological horror game Yuppie Psycho knows that there's nothing quite like it. It's a trippy, insane experience to say the least, and one hell of an game. The story begins with Brian Pasternak. He has received a letter from a large company known as Centricorp saying that they have a job opportunity for him. Because he is underqualified to say the least, Brian thinks this could potentially all be a big prank, but it turns out this is indeed a legitimate offer, though maybe one he wouldn't want in retrospect. The intro features a very nervous Brian riding in on a train to the interview, and then he's stuck in Centricorp's lobby awaiting that interview before ultimately following a bloody trail to a contract that will change everything. Trust me, it's a very hard title to put down once that intro plays, and I can't wait to see what's next for this very talented indie developer, as Yuppie Psycho won't be an easy act to follow. We're getting down there now, number two, and you know, Ninja Gaiden tricked me the other day if you're a fan of our channel I Dream of Retro Games, with that little intro before the intro, you could say. And you know, that got me thinking, this game is a tribute to Ninja Gaiden, so does Cyber Shadow do the same thing? And I'll be damned, I waited for about 45 seconds on the main screen, and you do get a little action intro before the main game's intro. I'm wondering if any of you missed this out there. Let me know in the comments below if you knew about it or not. Anyways, Cyber Shadow, in my opinion, is one of the best indies out there at accurately emulating classic 2D NES action games like Ninja Gaiden. Its tight mechanics, awesome soundtrack, and gorgeous pixel art make it an absolute must play for fans of the genre. The introduction for this title is really awesome as we quite literally see what looks like the end of the world. A massive explosion destroys a city. You awaken from a long slumber inside of your chamber to a now ruined world where you must stop the evil Dr. Progan and his army of robot nasties. Mecha City is a great world to battle your way through and Cyber Shadow does an awesome 
awesome job of immediately hooking players in. Alright everyone, you made it to number one. Thank you so much for sticking through this list. I hope that you very much have enjoyed it up to this point. Let's close it out in what I think is one of the more unusual indie games that we've ever had on the channel here. This is Everhood, a bizarre mix of rhythm game meets trippy RPG. A very surreal and awesome experience. This introduction will almost certainly draw you in, as the game asks a rather deep question before you awaken in a random forest and realize you are a wooden doll of some kind. After chasing down a crazy gnome, you eventually come across a Guitar Hero style grid hosted by a frog, and that's followed by an ATM machine that you'll battle on a similar grid. This intro should give you a good idea of what you can expect out of Everhood. Complete madness, and I love this game. In fact, there is a sequel coming, which I'm really, really excited about. And I hope you're excited about some of these indie games. Hey, maybe this was your first introduction to them ever. Be sure to check them all out. I know when I was making this list and I started playing them again to capture these intros, every single game here I did not want to stop playing. I think that says a lot about them. As always, we thank you so much for your continued support of independent content. Be sure to head over to patreon.com slash games where you can gain Discord access early at free shows, shoutouts at the end of every single video we produce, and yes, even free games depending on the tier you select. Your new indie gaming community can't wait to meet you, and voice to the voiceless, I will see you on the channel for more indie gaming coverage.